Good afternoon to you. Mark Suddoth, Hurricane Track here, Wilmington, North Carolina. That's my location. Good of you to join me here on this Wednesday, the 21st of August, 2024. The Atlantic Basin remains dead for now. It is busy, very busy over here in the eastern Pacific. What a flip-flop from where we thought things would be. Not busy at all in the Atlantic. All the action is in the East Pack. And we have to watch the Central Pacific. Our friends in Hawaii may get some action coming their way. No worries. I don't see anything particularly troublesome headed for Hawaii. But, you know, we have to watch these features as they mill around. Could get some impacts for our friends over there in the String of Pearls. And that is about it. Just kind of a calm period here in the Atlantic while the East Pack takes up the slack. So let's see what we've got out there first. National Hurricane Center in the Atlantic Basin, nothing over the next 48 hours. Same holds true over the next 168 hours. However, in the East Pack, very busy. We have Gilma out there. We have another area of interest here that is going to develop, it looks like, in the eastern Pacific, south of the Baja right there. Then, almost to the central Pacific, we have Invest Area 91E. Remember, the same thing happens in the Pacific that we do in the Atlantic our invest areas get a number 90 through 99 and then EP for Eastern Pacific and we just shorten it to E so you have 91 E 99 E or whatever the case is so there are our three systems and if we slide this over to the Central Pacific area of responsibility yes we have some action that could be headed toward Hawaii in the coming days so that will be the main focus of what we talk about or at least talk to you about today all right, well, trying to get me to drop out so I can continue on here. There we go. Looking at the satellite imagery this afternoon, pretty stout monsoon trough out here, convergence area where the air is coming together. The trough indicates, yeah, kind of a low pressure and um, probably a little bit of a reversal of the winds through here and uh, the wind blowing onshore to Africa. Generally a favorable pattern. But the atmosphere elsewhere not really conducive right now. The tropical waves coming off too far to the north. You're still bringing that Moroccan Saharan air with you if you're a tropical wave. So the convection is limited. And these are big sprawling pieces of energy too. They're not clean by themselves, discrete tropical waves. Hey, storm chasers that are out there, you'll understand this. When you are looking for tornadic supercells in like April and May, for example, it is those discrete storms that are by themselves that usually give us the most trouble. The ones that produce the tornadoes most prolifically are the discrete supercells. And while not directly related, in this case it's a good analogy, I think it works, tropical waves that are not clean by themselves, they get tangled up with the monsoon trough, or they're just too darn big, uh, typically take longer to develop and other things can go wrong and they don't develop. Just like when we are looking for tornado genesis, when you have a line, you typically don't have as prolific a tornado producing setup than if you had discrete supercells. So something similar happening with these tropical waves, but you know what? The calendar says it right there on the timestamp from Dr. Cowan's awesome animation there. It's only August 21st. We've seen this before. We have seen this movie before. We get lulled into thinking that ah, not much is going to happen. And then we either get one real big bad one or several of them. You know, every season's different and we still have plenty of time on the clock. We need to be watching and being ready. Even though we have a quiet period now, we don't know when it'll end. Uh, so take advantage of it. That's what I was trying to talk about yesterday. Use this time to get stuff done. I'm certainly going to do that. Got some projects that I can keep hammering away at. And we'll keep watching and waiting. Meanwhile, nice front came through. We've got a trough here over the east. Drier, cooler air. Went down to the beach with my wife and a couple of the kids here today. And some other families joined us. And uh, it's a beautiful late summer day. School starts back tomorrow. The waves were still elevated thanks to Ernesto, which is now firmly caught up in the westerlies up here. And uh, that will be that as it gets absorbed into those westerly wind energy zones. Meanwhile, what the heck is going on in the East Pack? Small but potent Hurricane Gilma sitting right there. You can see the eye very clearly. Another area that's going to try to develop. This is 91E. Yeah, we didn't expect that this would happen, but here it is. 
And these systems are fairly high in latitude. I say fairly. I mean, they're between 15 and 20. We're not seeing them way down south here. Uh, so it is a little bit surprising. You know, hey, meteorology, it can be surprising sometimes, right? And here we are with three systems to watch. The overall pattern, though, it's really interesting. I was trying to figure out, okay, what the heck is going on in the East Pack? Our features are basically right through here that they're trying to develop. And water temperatures in there are running above normal. Here is our stalled La Nina, you know, a little bit coolish here in the Nino 3.4 area. But none of this abnormally cold water, or anomalously cold is a good way to put it, perhaps a better way, none of this has reached up here into the latitude where our trio of systems is developing. So yeah, I guess it's the East Pack's turn, and once those systems die away, then maybe the Atlantic will come to life. We shall see. Remember, hurricane season goes through November 30th, and don't think we are going to get out of this with all this very warm water relative to average throughout the deep tropics, the Caribbean, and the Gulf. I just don't see how we get out of it without a major problem coming up at some point. The numbers notwithstanding, we still have plenty of hurricane season to go. But for now, we'll focus on the East Pack, where things, where things are uh, pretty busy. Real quick, though, looking at the Atlantic Basin, over the next 10 days, let's just take it out to 240 hours. You can see these tropical waves. This is at the 5,000-foot level of the atmosphere, 850 millibars. I mean, look, you have this giant area of turning down here. You can see that. And just the pattern not producing discrete systems by themselves. They come off, and you can see this turning right here. Huge pocket of energy, but it's either too big or it's got too much dry air with it. And we can see that dry air if we switch it over to the mid-level humidity. Uh, yeah, I mean, there is some moisture in there, but look at all this air that's just low humidity to the north. And these systems, they're so big and sprawling, they ingest that dry air, and they just don't do much. You can see those tropical waves come off one after the other. Really kind of fascinating to see that. Look, I mean, it's right there. There's one. There's one. There's another one there. There's one in here. You know, they come off, but they're just not doing much. And here we are out to 10 days and no, they have not done much, right? They haven't, because clearly we don't have any closed areas of uh, surface pressure down there. No, no closed lows. Lots of dry air still, and it's just the way it is. Again, take it, take it, because boy, when it turns ugly, we know it can turn ugly. And we're going to be loving these days like this when things are nice and quiet. Meanwhile, in the East Pack, there is Gilma. That is what a well-developed hurricane looks like at that 850 millibar level. This is what one looks like, and this is really cool, honestly, because I can show you all the stages of what I look for. Use it as a little bit of a classroom session here. Our 850 millibar vorticity, this is organizing. That's a full-on hurricane, and that's a little bit farther along in its process. Uh, really neat to see, and then here's your energy stretched out like a grapevine, and these systems try to develop off of that grapevine into nice ripe pieces of fruit to use that food analogy and you can see the evolution of all this right here on one model in reality because it's happening in the east packs let's move this out into time and you can watch and see how these systems evolve gilma there the most developed in this particular section of the ocean moves on off to the west over time the next system gets going on its heels that too will develop into a solid hurricane it does look like uh, the East Pack's going to really crank up some ace here. 55 in the Atlantic right now, roughly, and uh, we'll see. Maybe the East Pack surpasses the Atlantic when this is all said and done. Now we're out at uh, day 10 right there. And maybe by this time frame, this is August 31st, 10 days out, nothing in the East Pack at this point. Perhaps that will be the cue for the Atlantic to start to wake up. We have seen that happen before. It could happen again. We'll see. But for now, let's pay attention to the East Pack and the Central Pacific. I slid the map extent to the west some because there is Hawaii out there, the Hawaiian Islands. This is a disturbance that is going to try to develop first, or at least first as in closest to Hawaii. And look what happens. This ramps up, comes in just to the south of the Big Island, I'm telling you, right now, let's switch this over to that precip uh, section of uh, the tidbit site. 
Look at all that moisture there. That's what I need people to be paying attention to. Wake up if you're in Hawaii, especially the Big Island. Don't worry about the old, well, hurricanes are hard to come by here in Hawaii. They rarely ever hit. That is true. But then you're talking about a specific name, a specific classification, and you get pigeonholed into that. You need to look at this and say, okay, there could be a lot of rain coming. And what do we have in Hawaii? Big mountains, volcanic mountains, right? Lots of elevation change and the potential for flooding. We have seen it when we get those Kona lows that go through there. And if you are in Hawaii and you've been there for any length of time, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This tropical system, you get that upslope flow. The air comes up those mountains. It gets wrung out very efficiently. We call that orographic lift. This could be a big problem, rain. So yes, Hawaii could have some impacts. And this is coming up this weekend. The timestamp on this, 108 hours out. So Sunday into Monday, that could be a big problem for our friends in Hawaii. So everybody needs to be paying attention to that. It goes through all that green passing through those islands. Uh, the big island to Oahu and Maui and elsewhere, you could have some trouble. And then the next system comes along right here and then one after it. Man, just one after the other out there. Take this out to day 10 and you can have a repeat there just to the south of Hawaii, the big island as well. So a lot to watch for for our friends out here in the Central Pacific. Let's rewind it and start at the beginning. See how this evolves. Lots of lots of moisture coming for Hawaii, it looks like, and the flood potential could be substantial. I'll be watching that closely, and I might consider heading out there. We'll have to see about that. That will be Monday morning. That's exactly five days from now. And again, you look at that, it's hard to see, but that's 1,003, and you say, Mark, come on, that's not even a tropical storm, probably, to which I say, that's not the point. All that moisture in there, boy, we can have some heavy rain and you think about Hawaii, oh man, heavy rain, they got rainforest there. But when you get that upslope flow, it gets really, really dangerous. So we need to pay attention to that. And just to show you, water temperatures can support tropical cyclones coming through there. This is the 26 degrees Celsius isotherm, roughly 80 degrees Fahrenheit. There's Hawaii, in case you didn't know. And then you can, uh, I found another map here, can zoom in even tighter and you get a better representation uh, the 26 Celsius is roughly here. So yes, I mean, it's about 80, 81 degrees in and around Hawaii. So plenty of available upper ocean heat content to support a tropical cyclone. And that is the point. You can get that onshore wind right here, the big island, any of that onshore flow, that could be very problematic. So we're going to be watching this closely. It's not just about the Atlantic Basin, ladies and gentlemen. I know that's where most of the people view because of, I get it, the lower 48 and whatnot, but let's not forget our friends out there in the Central Pacific. I won't. I'll be on top of it. It is busy here, even if it's not busy over there. You understand. All right, so that's it for me for today. Have a good rest of your Wednesday. Thanks for tuning in. From all of us at Hurricane Track, I am Mark Suddeth. I'll see you again tomorrow.